She's gonna get on you, but is she gonna kick you out the house? Or, or how old are you? 16, mm, you're a young man. But you can grow a beard and your principal doesn't have anything to say about it. But let me show you the law. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the law. I can't give you room to sin. I'm not gonna tell you follow your mom and not God because God's words stand firm. Get back in control, take up the blindfold. Pick up a book, read about stories that are told. Living a baby man, have you configure your role? I'm a freedom fighter, can you hear it in my tone? Pick a lot. Yes, sir, what's your question? How should you worship? Give me that. All right, we're going to show you. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. The book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 24. God is, a, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's how you worship God. Now, my question to you, what is spirit and what is truth? Now remember what God said. God said if you speak, you speak as, as the oracles of God. So, what you're about to say, I want you to prove it to me with a scripture. I'm not sure how to answer. Very good. That's a good answer. You know why you're not sure? Because these pork chop eating pastors never taught you that. All they read, they read that scripture, they closed the Bible. Worship me in spirit and it's true, brother. But they didn't go into it and show you what it, what is spirit and truth. What is spirit and truth? Spirit and truth. What is spirit and truth? Okay, good answer. That's a good and honest answer. What is spirit and truth? So no, ma. What is spirit and truth? Very good. You don't know. I asked about five people and they don't know. And we know you don't know. Even if you had an answer, you still wouldn't know. We're going to show you what the spirit is. John 6, verse 63. We're going to show you. The book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. it. God said it is the spirit that quickeneth, meaning it is the spirit that changes. Come on. The flesh profited nothing. Flesh is sin. Sin profits you nothing. Come on. The words. The what? The words. Where are the words of God found? A trip. Very good. Where are the words of God found? Where are the words of God found? In the Bible. Where are the words of God found? In the Bible. Where are the words of God found? In the Bible. Okay. Remember, we went here for spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are what? They are spirit. How do we worship God in, tr in truth and spirit? What is the spirit? The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. So the words, meaning the commandments, hold on, sis. The prophecies, the commandments, everything written in this Bible is spiritual. That's the spirit. Now let's get the truth because the brother asked a good question. And the churches, they teach you to worship God in spirit and in truth. Come on, truth. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Oh, your righteousness, God, is an everlasting righteousness. Where's the righteousness of God found? In the Bible. Come on. And thy law, thy what? Thy law, thy what? Thy law, thy law is the truth. God's laws are the truth. Let's get some laws now. So that answers your question. Now let's get some laws. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Before you get that, give me Romans 7.14. Romans 7, 14, get them, get, then get me Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. So let me ask you a question. How many of you believe in God? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Come on. Don't be shy. Who believes in God? Put your hands up, sister. Come on. There we go. Well, not the sun. Well, the sun is there, but we don't worship the sun. So we believe, you mean the S-O-N or S-U-N? S-O-N, Christ. Okay. Okay, so we believe in God, meaning we believe on the Bible, right? Okay, let's see how many of you believe on the Bible. Romans 7, 14. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sown under sin. So the words, the laws of God are spiritual. Let's get some spiritual law. 
Very easy to understand. God says, my laws are spiritual. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, let's, let's analyze this commandment. Because that's exactly what it is. The words of God are commandments. Let's analyze it now. Go back to the beginning. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So God says the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What does a woman wear that pertaineth unto, unto men? I'm going to let you answer, sis. What do women wear today in Jamaica that pertains to men? Pants, very good, very good. Now what happens when a woman puts on pants? Let's get the spiritual aspect of that. Many things could come out of that. Let's deal with the first reason why our women wear pants, tight jeans, and so forth. Lust, lust. The black woman in the mirror wiggling, wiggling to put that thing on. Could barely put it on. She need a forklift to put that thing on. And then what does she do when she looks in the mirror? What's the first thing she do? She spins, boom. She looks to the side and she looks back to see how those jeans fit her derriere called the butt. That's what she does, which puts lust in the community. You know how many men just alone standing here today I seen? Sister walk by, the brother walk by, he go like this. Now is he looking at the back of her cranium because she got a good mind? No, She's, he's looking at her butt. He's looking at that, that, that behind. Why? Because he wants to pop that. He wants to hit that. And when he does hit that, what comes out of that? Either babies or diseases, whoredom, adultery, filling the land in Jamaica. All because of one law being broken. Remember what God said, my law is spiritual. One law being broken comes the law about the woman wearing pants, jeans, and so forth. What's another thing that comes out of that besides whoredom? Masculine spirit. The woman, you ever heard of the term, I wear the pants in the relationship? That's literal, too. Yeah, you do wear the pants in the relationship. You're wearing pants, and not only ruling your household and slapping your husband out upside of the head, but you're wearing his clothes, too. So that puts on a masculine spirit. You ever see female police officers? You ever see female, how tough they act? How tough, how tough they, they walk? They walk with that bop? Why? Because the pants has given them authority. God says, no, you are not supposed to have authority. You're not supposed to usurp authority. Get me that. God says, you're not supposed to usurp authority. Your husband, the man, is supposed to have the authority. So you take off those pants, those Hello. abominable pants, and you put on a dress. The same way God is talking to the, what they call on this island, Chichiman. Or the other word, I don't know if I can say it. It starts with a B. I don't want to get arrested. You can say it. What do they call it? Homosexual. Okay, okay, we'll use that word. Homosexual. They wear dresses. God says don't do that. God says don't do that. Don't put on dresses. But let me read something for you. Come on. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. So God says he doesn't want a woman to teach me in the congregation, the church. Come on. Nor to absorb authority over the man. So what happens when a woman put on men clothing? You start to usurp authority over your man over your husband. God says he does not like that. He does not like cross-dressing. Now before I ask you, how many of you believe in God? You all raised your hand. Now are you willing to take the pants off if you believe in God? Yes. Very good. Give the sister a hand. Give the sister a hand. She said yes. She didn't buck up. Most Jamaican women, no, nah, virgin, I can't do that. I can't, no, nah, man. I can't do that. But this sister, very good. You humbled yourself to the word of God. And I really hope that you sincerely repent of that sin. Okay, we understand that. But you know what you can do? Give me the example of Esther. Because the sister made a uh, said a beautiful thing. Two things you can do. Two things you can do when you repent. You repent. You come into the nationality of who you are. You're an Israelite. You come into our organized nation because that's exactly what we are. And, you, and we see that you repent sincerely, we can give you a letter that you can give to your boss. Saying that you are following the commandments of God. Now you must put on a skirt because your God who you serve commands you to put on a skirt. 
and guess what? He might honor that. Or you can do this. Get me Esther. About the, um, the, the 516. 516. In the pocket for Bishop Paul. Right here, this one right here. The book of rest of Esther, chapter 5, verse 16. Come on. Thou knewest. No, sorry. Thou knowest. Thou knowest my necessity, uh -huh. for I abhor the sign of my highest state. So this was Esther, who was in the Persian Median captivity, but she was raised up as a queen to bring deliverance to the Israelites. And you know what tribe she was from? Take a guess. Your tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. Esther, beautiful Benjamite. God put her up to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the heathen, out of the hand of the Persian Medes. Okay, come on. Which is upon my head. And though she had something on, she had the crown on her head that she hated. She hated because that was the Persian Median crown that she had on her head. Come on. Those days wherein I show myself, and I that I abhor it as menstruous. So Esther hated this crown that was on her head that she had to wear around the palace. She compared it to a menstruous rag, a bloody, stinky tampon, an abominable tampon she compared this crown to. The same way God compares pants to something abominable, an abomination. Esther said she hated it. What did she do? And that I wear it not when she what? I wear it not when I am in private by myself. So you are out of work now. So your boss has no control over you. Your boss can't write you up. Your boss can't write you up. Your boss can't your boss can't suspend you, nor can he fire you. You left work. You're off of work. You clocked out. So what do you do? You put a skirt in that dress, in that um or a dress in that bag. Once you leave, you go to the bathroom, you put on your beautiful dress, 1 Timothy 2, verse 9. You put on your beautiful apparel, and then you come out on the street. God is going to see that you're trying to keep his commandments. We know we're in captivity. You know we're in captivity. So it's going to be hard for us, but we must make a way. If there's a will, there's a way. And God's will must be done on earth. Come on. The Sabbath day is Saturday. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. When did you think was the Sabbath? Huh? We'll show you. We'll get to that. Come on. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What does modest mean? Shame face. Modest apparel. Modest apparel is not apple bottom jeans. Modest apparel. Modest apparel is not. My, hold on, hold on. Modest apparel is not poom poom shorts. Modest apparel is not body riders. Modest apparel is dresses and skirt that goes beneath your knees. That's a modest apparel. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful custom that God gave our people. Your grandmother never wore jeans. So why are you wearing jeans? You know why? Because Babylon has, has infiltrated your mind. The white man has embedded his doctrine in your mind. That doctrine that you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. It's a democracy. It's a Christian state. Do whatever you want. But God, as long as we're servants of God, as long as this Bible is here, we're going to obey God. We're going to obey God's laws. Because God's laws endure forever. Give me Baruch 336. God's laws endureth forever. Keyword, forever. Forever and ever. Come on. Yes, sir. Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. Read, come on. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. He found out all the way of knowledge and had given it unto Jacob. All the way of knowledge. It's not only talking about God's laws, but everything. Math, science. We were the forerunners of that. That was us. Abraham, Joseph understood that thing. God said he found all, all the ways of knowledge and gave it to who? Jacob. Who's Jacob? Jacob. Esau, brother. What was his name changed to? Israel. Israel, you forgot the thought already. Okay, come on, read it from the top. He found out all the way of knowledge and had given it unto Jacob his servant and to Israel his beloved. Afterward, he and gave it unto Jacob his servant and Israel his beloved. Come on. Afterwards, did he show himself upon earth and converse with men? Oh, verse 1. 
the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandment of God. You're listening up, black man? Listen, listen. Come on. And the law that endureth forever. Hear that? God's laws endureth forever. God laws endureth forever. You, Leviticus 21 and 5. God laws endureth forever. Are we still here on this planet Earth? Yes. So that means the laws still apply. Even when Christ come back, the laws are still going to be here. Because that's how we're going to rule the planet Earth. Under the laws of the Heavenly Father. Israel united in Christ. The church is the nation of Israel. Israel united in Christ, okay? We're a nation of people that's united in Christ, our Lord and Savior. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. Thou, they shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So black men, if you can grow a beard, God is saying to grow your beard. God says, don't mar, disfigure, or shave off the corner of your beard. Nor should you bald your head. Michael Jordan bald. You have a question? You were going to say something? Speak loud. One thing I notice about the Jamaicans on this island, you guys speak very soft. I don't know if that's the British man that told you to do it. You're a black man. You're a man. Speak loud. Speak up with confidence. Okay? Come on. As um. As I'm growing up, um, my mother always said, like, I'm, I'm growing beard, like, yeah. and she said, as I, I'm going to school, I must trim my beard, and the principal doesn't have any problem with that, but she have a problem with that. Your mom? Yeah. Because your mom don't know the Bible. Let's see. Now, let me ask you something. We read that this is the law that endures forever. You said earlier you believe in God, right? So who's going to follow? Do you, do you live with your mom? Okay. Okay, so if you grew a beard, would your mom kick you out the house? She's going to get on you, but is she going to kick you out the house? Or, or how old are you? 16. Mm, you're a young man. But you can grow a beard, and your principal doesn't have anything to say about it. But let me show you the law. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the law. I can't give you room to sin. I'm not going to tell you follow your mom and not God, because God's words stand firm. Come on. The book of... Two Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So God says, don't shave off the corner of your beard. That is a law. That is a law. So now you have to ask yourself, how are you going to apply that law? Are you willing, are you going to be willing, on Psalms 94, 16? Are you going to stand on the side of God? Or are you going to listen to mommy? That's what you got to ask yourself. Huh? You said what? Do I shave my beard? No. Do I line it up? Yes. Do I shave up? Shave mean to disfigure, to mar it. Meaning you see how my, look, listen, you ask me a question, don't look at the woman. No, listen, listen, listen now. My beard grows wide, right? If I disfigure it, that's shaving it, that's marring it. You're destroying the original line of your beard. You know how the men get the little chin strap, the pretty boy shape ups we call it? God says don't do that. When you shave it off clean like you, God says don't do that. Okay? So, am I breaking that law? Absolutely not. Read it again for him. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Now, these are small laws that we're supposed to keep. These are small laws. These laws are not hard. If you can't keep these laws, imagine the big laws. Imagine the big laws. You're going to break those too. You're going to stumble. You're going to stumble. Get me um, Psalms 94, 16 real quick. I'm going to show them something. Because I made a statement. What side are you going to stand on? Are you going to stand on God's side? Or are you going to stand on your mother's side? Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, reading from verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? So God is speaking to you men, you black men. Who's going to rise up? against the evildoers. The evildoers are those who work iniquity, those who work sin. God says, who is going to rise up for me? Come on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And who will rise up for me against the workers of iniquity? So you got to come, you have to, you have to resolve this between your mind, yourself. Or are you going to stand for God, keeping the commandments? Or are you going to stand with the world? When I mean the world, I'm talking about your friends, your family, the doctrines, the philosophies of this earth. Because this is war. We're at war, believe it or not. We are warring for the souls of our people. Because when Christ comes, there's no talking. 
When Christ comes, there's no excuses. There's no uh, should have, could have, maybe. It's done. Heads are going to be chopped off. Heads are going to be rolling. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.